everyone, this is Dawn. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to do the bokeh technique in card making. And what the bokeh technique is, it's a photography term and it refers to the blur produced in the out of focus areas of an image or it's the way the lens renders out of focus points of light. Okay, so let's get started. First, you will need to make a stencil, and you could use the stencil film from Close to My Heart, or you can use acetate transparency paper. And what I've done is cut a variety of circle sizes on my Cricut, but you could use a punch or um, dies to make yourself a stencil. And I've got some white daisy cardstock here. So what I'm doing is um, just using my blending brushes to make a variety of, of color washes on um, this piece of cardstock. So I'm using lemonade and nectarine and raspberry. And I'm just putting it in different areas on this piece of cardstock and I'll eventually be blending everything together. And then I'm just using a microfiber cleaning cloth to kind of wipe off my blending brush in between. You can use a sponge if you prefer to blend uh, with. You don't need a blending brush. I just wanted a, a softer wash of color and they're fun to use. <laughs> so I'm just kind of going back and forth until I get the blend that I like. And these are dye inks. So it takes a little while for them to kind of blend together with one another, one another as opposed to like an oxide ink. So then I'm cleaning up my work surface here and I'm going to hit it with my heat tool just to make sure it's completely set so that when I bring in my pigment ink, this is white daisy pigment ink, it'll be easier to apply to a dry surface. So I'm taking my stencil and I'm just laying it down and sponging in the pigment ink over my colored surface and I'm just moving them around to get them to look random in different sizes and then um, buffing out any hard edges or concentrations of white daisy to get a soft look. Just kind of buffing it out. And I'll just keep going around and choosing different sizes of the circles. And they don't have to be exact. I just want a, a random soft look. I'm just going to keep going around until I'm happy. Okay. That looks good. And then I'm going to remove the uh, temporary tape that I had put on the back of this panel to uh, tack it down to my work surface with the rub and remove eraser. Do a final buff there and then I'm going to set the pigment ink with my heat tool. Okay, that one's all done. I'm going to get everything cleaned up and we'll start a new one. So this one is with Ballerina. I'm going to do really soft colors with this one. It's Ballerina, Lilac, and Wisteria. So I'm just kind of experimenting and you can choose whatever color combinations you like, but I try to stay kind of within the same color family. And you don't have to wash your blending brush with soap and water. I just wipe it down with the cleaning cloth. As long as you're kind of in the same color family, you'll be okay. I did get some of the um, orange 
from that previous panel that I made, so I'm switching out to a different uh, blending brush here because I wanted my pink to look pink, <laughs> so it worked out. So now I'm adding in some lilac, then I'll go back to the ballerina. And then I'll bring in some wisteria. These backgrounds are really fun to make. It's fun to kind of experiment with color combinations. All right, almost done there. So after I complete my bokeh backgrounds, I will use them to create some cards with them. So I'll show you how I do that as well. All right, I'm gonna wipe everything down, hit it with my heat tool, and then I'll bring in my stencil and pigment ink and start making my circles. And it's the same process. I just decided to keep everything in the video to show you. And there's no right or wrong or specific area, just kind of make everything look really random and overlap your circles. It makes them look more random. And I did several circles off the edges of the card panel there. And just kept going around till I liked the results. And then I'm buffing out those concentrated areas and hitting it with my heat tool to set it. So that's another panel. Okay, so now we'll do our last one for this video. Now this one I'm going to do a variety of greens. I'm doing green apple and clover and evergreen. And it's exactly the same process, but I'll just let you watch me put some random washes of color down on this card panel and start to build everything up. And then I'll just go in with clover. I'm going back and forth to get a blend, so after this I'll just make some random washes. And if you're going from a darker color to a lighter color, it's good to wipe off your blending brush so that you don't contaminate the lighter color's ink pad surface with the darker color. So I'm just going back and forth to get a blend, and then I'll bring in the evergreen. One more time with a green apple. And then I'll hit it with my heat tool to set it. Okay, and now I'll bring in my sponge tool and pigment and my circle stencil. And then you'll see the bokeh technique take effect here. And 
and just keep going around and overlapping my circles and going off the edges. And then I'll buff everything out. And then I decided I needed a few more circles. And just keep going. Okay. Then I'll hit it with my heat tool in a second to set everything. And then I'll get everything cleaned up here. I'll use my rub and remove eraser to remove that temporary tape runner from the back. Okay, now let's start to build some cards here. So I'm using a stamp set called Sentiments and Stitches, and this is from the March-April catalog. And my card panels I had cut at four and a quarter by five and a half, so I'm trimming it down to leave a border around this one on my card front. And I'm just kind of deciding on my design here. So I'm going to put my sentiment in at a diagonal. So I'm bringing in my straight edge here. And I'm not measuring, I'm just putting it down where I think it looks good. <laughs> and I'm going to draw a line in pencil on there. And then I'm going to move it up, leave enough room for my sentiment, and draw another line. And then I'm going to cut along those diagonal lines. It's a little bit scary to trim up your art panel, but I like the results. Okay, I'll set aside that one piece for a different project later on. So that's kind of how I like everything laid out. And I'm making sure that my sentiment will fit in there. So before I tape it down on my card front, I decided to bring in a piece of sangria instead of a white base for my card front. So I'm going to stamp the sentiment that says just a little note to say, I think you're pretty amazing. And I'm going to stamp this a couple times just in case I mess things up when I decide to trim it. So I'm still not exactly sure where I'm going with this. And so, and I can use those for a different card. Okay, I'm going to trim this down. And I'm lining it up kind of with the edge of the um, piece on my trimmer because I didn't stamp them exactly straight right there on that piece of cardstock. So I'm making sure that when I trim it out, the sentiment piece is straight. That's why it's taking me a little minute to line everything up there. And then I'm going to trim off those ends. make sure it's centered and then I decided I was going to dovetail those ends and kind of make a, a banner with that sentiment piece. So the easiest way to dovetail is to make a straight cut in the center 
and then take your corners to meet up with that cut. And it's not perfect, but that's okay. That's part of the charm of handmade. So now I'm just going to trim down my sangria piece to four and a quarter by five and a half to fit on my card front. And it is a side folding A2 card. So I'm going to glue that down with the broad tip glue pen and kind of burnish it with my bone folder there. And I'm just laying everything out to make sure I like the design. And then I'm going to tack that down my colored panels with Tombow tape runner. And then I was deciding if I wanted to pop that with foam tape, but nope, decided to put that down with Tombow as well. And then I'll place that one down. Sometimes it's a little tricky when you're working with diagonal pieces to get everything straight on your card. So I'm deciding between my Hello dies and I think this one is from Technique Tuesday. I, I have a magnetic wall on my scrap box where I keep all of my dies, so I throw away the packaging, so I apologize. I can't remember. It, it may have been Spellbinders. I'm not sure. And so then I added some jewels around, and that's my finished card. Always got to have a little bling on there. Okay, next card. This is the green one. And I've got that um, dreamy holographic paper. And I've cut out the word happy. And then it has a um, solid background that goes behind the word. And so I've cut that in black. So now I'm going to cut down my art panel. And that happy die, um, again, I apologize, I can't remember. I think it's a Simon Says Stamp brand. Oh, CZ Designs, I think. So I'm trimming down some strips of holographic paper. Um, at, I think it's about a quarter of an inch by five and a half. And this holographic paper, it's super cool, and a little goes a long way, so you just need that a little strip to make a difference on your, your card front. And then, of course, I cut the word happy out. I also uh, cut the word happy out of white daisy cardstock, and I layered them. I stacked them and glued them each layer together to make it a little thicker. So now I'm trying to decide if I want to center my art panel, and that's ultimately what I decided. It's kind of figuring placement on that front of the card. And then I'm going to tuck those little strips of holographic paper in on the edges to kind of create a border. They're a little fiddly, but I made it work. And that's why I used the Tombow tape on the other piece, so that I would have those edges to be able to pull up to tuck this strip underneath. I'm using Aqua Tombow glue to adhere everything else down. All right. And then I have a banner piece that I've cut in White Daisy, and I'm using the stamp set called A Little Sentiment, and I'm going to stamp the word birthday. And this stamp set is also available in the March-April catalog. It's currently available. It's a little stamp set, but I like the font on a lot of the sentiments in there. 
So now I'm just going to glue everything down. And I thought I was going to use that layered leaves up in the left corner there for this one, but I changed my mind. All right, so that's kind of the layout of my card front, making sure it's straight. And then I'm going to pop the birthday banner with some thin foam tape. And then, of course, off camera, I'm going to add some jewels to sprinkle all around. Gotta have that bling. <laughs> okay, so I'm finishing up there, and that's my completed card. I love that holographic paper. Okay. Last card here, and this is with the pastel panel that I made. So I've cut another um, frame, a stitched rectangle in uh, the holographic paper. And I'm going to use the sentiment that says, wishing you everything happy. And it's from that sentiments and stitches stamp set. So I'm stamping that in black. And now I'm just gonna layer my card front. And this is a top folding landscape A2 size. So that is Bluebird cardstock, and it's cut at four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I've cut down my panel to leave a border around the edges there. And then I'm going to glue my stitched frame around my bokeh panel there. And then I've got some other die cuts and thin cuts on my work surface there, and I'm just kind of playing around, and I decided I was going to use that layered leaves. That is a retired Close to My Heart set, and I have cut it three times and stacked it, so it's not quite as delicate. And then I'm going to glue that down with white glue from Tombow. And of course, add some gems. And I'll put a block on there just to make it set up. And, and there's my completed card. So I'll make a list of supplies with links in the description below. I appreciate you watching my video today. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. And thanks for watching.